Okay. It is just about 2 o'clock. Um, we have roughly one more minute, but we're going to go ahead and get going uh, for this regular Planning Commission meeting on Tuesday, August 1st at 2 p.m. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it to order. Stephanie, can we do a roll call, please? Here. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, okay. At this time, it would be uh, prudent for the board members to declare any conflicts of interest if they have any. Seeing none, we'll continue on. Uh, and to our second bullet point within the agenda, Stephanie, can you certify uh, that we are in compliant with resolution 2023 01? I can certify that the meeting and properties were posted in accordance with resolution So that's letter F under the quasi-judicial public hearing has been removed or withdrawn. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, we'll lead right into number three on our agenda, the approval of agenda today. I move to approve the agenda. Second. Great. We have, uh, with the removal of 6F, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. we have a, a motion and a second. We'll go to a um, roll call vote. Stephanie? Aye. 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 Great. Um, so we have our agenda set today. Um, we have a lot to get through, so we'll move quickly. But uh, before we do that, we'll have to approve uh, the meeting minutes from July 5th, our last regularly scheduled meeting. Any corrections or changes to the minutes? I only have one correction. I wasn't here, so I don't know what <clears throat> change it would make, except that on one of the agenda items, it says that there were uh, three eyes and one nay. There were actually four eyes, I believe. I'm not. And that is on what page? I'm trying to find it. Carried with all eyes. That wasn't in that. It is on page five of the last meeting minutes. It says motion carried with three yep. positives and one negatives. Yes. And that is to uh, letter B petition rezone case, I believe is what Commissioner Williams is saying. You see that, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was B. On page five. Commissioner Hall voted no. Commissioner Hall voted no. What's that? Actually, just page needs to say seven that. or eight of 145, if you're looking at it that yeah. way. Page eight of 145. No, it should be there four should... positive and one negative, yeah. as opposed to three and one, I believe, if oh, that's the way the vote went. Correct. Yep. Okay. So there's one change. Any other changes? No comments. With corrections, I'd entertain a motion. Go ahead. You weren't here. 
I just I'll, read them. I'll, go ahead. I'll, I'll second you. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. As corrected, right? As corrected. As corrected. Thank you. We have a uh, motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Abstain. Thank you. And I'll need a new set of minutes to sign, right, Stephanie? Sounds good. Sounds good. I'll do that in a moment. All right, let's continue on. Um, we'll go to bullet point five on our agenda, which is the public input. Uh, for those that are in the audience and then on Zoom as well, this time for public input is for any item that is not currently listed on our agenda. This is the opportunity for uh, community members to bring up issues to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. So if there are, is anybody that would like to comment on items that are not on our agenda, now would be the time to do that. Okay. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public input. And we can move to number six on our agenda, the quasi-judicial public hearing. Um, at this time, we'll go to bullet point A, which is a continuation of conditional use approval request 2023-179. Uh, Sam, do you want to tell us about this request and give us an update, I guess? Yes, uh, with us virtually, we have Carlo and Rebecca Trujillo. Um, they have, since the last uh, meeting, um, identified the parking that would potentially be allowed for in front of the building. Uh, looks like they have two spaces that they would be able to fit. I know they had um, hoped for three, but it doesn't seem to be uh, the case. We think that they can safely have two vehicles there. Um, I did speak with the owners about having um, blocks put in place or something to protect the safety of the occupants of the structure. Um, we did tell them that if this was approved, they would need to, at their expense, do rollover curb that would uh, be flush with the next property over um, so that they could access those two parking spaces. We have... Um, been approved from the New Mexico Department of Transportation to add an ad additional 12 parking spaces along Sedworth Drive up to the circle. Um, so there will be public parking within probably the next six weeks. Um, they're going to restripe Sedworth and take it down to uh, one lane on each side and then have the on-street parking. And so any overflow would have to go to public parking. Um, to not impact any of the surrounding properties. And um, I did inform them that should the commission make the decision to allow for this use in the two parking spaces, code enforcement would be made aware um, that they are limited to only two spaces so that they're not negatively impacting the neighborhood. Okay. And we do have Bobby Simpson on as well. Okay. Um, Great. Can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, Vicki. Um, on that uh, public parking that may be instituted going along the road um, up toward the circle, is that considered village maintained parking or is that Department of Transportation State? Uh, from the intersection of Meacham and Sutter, that's Village of Rio Doso. Okay. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'll open it up to the uh, applicant uh, to restate uh, some of what Sam said, or anything to add to the report that Sam gave? Uh, either Rebecca, you, or, or Carlo, Mr. and Mrs. Trujillo. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be seen and heard again, and for your guys' consideration. We're, we're sorry we couldn't be there. This is my second day back in the schools, so I would have loved to be there, but school is starting again, so I got to make my presence known here. Um, we, uh, pretty much what uh, Samantha has kind of gone over after our long discussion the last couple of times that we've been there, um, we just want to, <clears throat> we went back and we kind of asked and did what the commission asked for 
as far as the parking, the striping, the everything. And then we've also gotten a lot of quotes for the curb. Um, we've gotten approval. We've gotten a lot of things that the commission has wanted. Um, I mean, I don't want to go into everything again because I know that it is a long meeting and I don't want to reiterate everything that we has already been said. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, I have something. This is Carlo Trujillo. How are you today? I'm sorry, my video is not working. So um, if you can hear me, that I appreciate it. Um, the only thing I, I would like to say is that, you know, when we purchased this property, we, we purchased it with, you know, good intentions to, to fix it up and, and better the community. Um, we have already submitted for a permit to do some of the exterior work to you know, put a, a roof on it and, and maybe some new windows and, and some painting. So we've already kind of begun on that. That's really the only thing we can start now until we kind of determine the approval. But what I do want to say is, you know, this is a situation that, that we didn't create. It's not something that we intentionally did. Um, but we're trying to make the best out of a situation that has just developed over time. I mean, as I think as everybody can see, the property is extremely unique and basically they used every square inch of it um so we took your recommendation on the first meeting to potentially remove the landscaping and and create some area uh, in the second meeting we understand why it was kind of tabled because it wasn't clear of the size requirements so we took your recommendation and and hired uh, lt survey not a rio doso to go in and and make sure that that we met the standards which was uh 20 feet by nine feet after discussions with samantha so that's that's kind of I just wanted to reiterate we're just trying to make the best of a situation I know that there's been lots of studies done on the Sut Earth area and some dilapidated properties that that they're really trying to focus on and and revitalize I know that that was a, a big part of that study so we're trying to just do what we can and and we've even started and I think it's already looking a lot nicer and if approved you know we're going to go full force and and make that property really something that's going to stand out, put a copper roof on it, and, and just something that really fits the village of Rio Doso. So we appreciate your time, and I know it is a long meeting, so we don't want to over over speak what we've already talked about, but thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you for your comments. And, and there's a little bit of an echo, but if you wouldn't mind um, swearing or just raising your hand and say you'll swear that, to tell the truth and everything you've already and everything said. You've already yes, sir, I, I swear to tell the truth. Okay, great. Um, uh, point of clarification for me, since this is a continuation, do we need to have all of the additional talking points that we covered the last time? Um, or can we just say any new material for the um, public input on this topic? I ask for only new okay. material. Just clarifying. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Trujillo and, and those that are here to comment on this, we have heard this and this is a continuation from the last meeting. So at this time, we're just gonna ask for any questions or concerns or, or um, input on this topic that would be net new to the discussion. We did have a long meeting on this last time um, and we do have the context of this particular property. So um, at this time, we can open it up for cross-examination. So if anybody would like to speak for or against this topic that either didn't get the opportunity previously or has something net new to add, feel free to come on down. And Mr. and Mrs. Trujillo, you will have the opportunity to um, state your piece as well. I promise to tell the truth. I'm Pam Jenkins, owner of 105 Sleepy Hollow. Um, my question is actually for the Trujillo. So I see the proposal of what looks like a deck. And so my question is, where are you putting that? And it looks like a, you know, I mean, there's a drawing of it. I know it's not the property, but it does show a pretty elaborate deck. Is it going on the front? Is it going on the back? What page are you referring to? In the I don't. Sorry, we're not we don't have plans on doing a deck i believe what you are looking at is whenever we originally put in our application right. we added a color scheme yeah and that is the color scheme there's no deck okay so that, so that was just showing what color you're gonna, scheme how you're going to paint it 
okay. color scheme. Okay. Um, well, I did a little bit of research, and um, the only statement I have is that 2904, I understand that um, Mr. Trujillo is saying that some of these things have gone on a long time, but uh, the Trujillos were very aware that there was no parking for this building when they purchased it. They knew it was going to be a challenge. Um, also, I own 105 Sleepy Hollow. My house is 1,010 square feet. I am required by the village, as per my permit for Airbnb, to have three parking places. So I did research on 2904 Sutterth, um, the Trujillo's property. It is 3,602 square feet. Um, this started in... Sorry to interrupt. Huh? Um, we started this seven months ago. They've had seven months to procure parking. They have never approached us. They, they have sued us. They've got us into a lawsuit over the parking on my yard, which we are just trying to protect our property. And there again, that's why we continue to come to these meetings, because the change in zoning and allowing this property to become a nightly rental is going to do undue harm to my property specifically, but I think to every neighbor around. Um, there are the encroaching stairs, which I know I have talked about, uh, but I didn't see anything in their um, continuation, which... Um, I believe it was you, Commissioner Ball, that said, you know, would you be willing? Well, I haven't been told about that. Um, it's not personal for, for me and my husband. If, if it wasn't the encroachment, I mean, and I did send a letter, and I sent pictures showing just how close those stairs are to my house. So if, if they are allowed to have an Airbnb, they're going to come straight down through there. Um, you know, we noticed yesterday there's painters over there. They're painting on, they're parking on the sidewalk already. Um, and these are people that they've hired. So how are they going to control renters on a weekend basis? So that's my biggest concern. Uh, I, I wouldn't care if they had an Airbnb in that building. It is a beautiful building. But it shouldn't be at my expense. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your comments. Um, do I have a chance to respond to that? This is Carlo Trujillo. Yes, Mr. Trujillo. Yes, Mr. Trujillo. Can keep your comments. Yeah, um, comment yeah I, I would like to minutes. respond. And, and she indicated that we were aware that there was no parking. That is not true. The the I have a letter from our realtor prior to purchasing that that parking was included, that there's an easement. And at this point, it is a legal battle, and we are suing the Jenkins because that property has had an easement since 2007. So I, I hate to really keep bringing this back because we've kind of – talked about this on every single meeting. However, we did purchase that property thinking we had uh, parking because there is a legal documented easement that shows that. And prior to us purchasing, up until the day we purchased and signed our paperwork, there was a tenant. The counseling office was utilizing that parking in the back with an agreement with Ms. Jenkins. Prior to purchasing, I got on a phone call with myself, Ms. Jenkins, and Stephanie from the village and she indicated that, yes, we will work something out because that is parking. She set up a meeting two days later and canceled on us when we arrived to Rio Doso. So that's just speaking to the point that um, there was no parking. As well as that we never approached her because we did. We tried many times and we had tried to um, acquire parking from our other neighbor, even purchasing um, land. Um, <clears throat> and... What this whole meeting is about is not about the easement. It's not. It is about the parking and trying to use that, the parking in the front, as well as trying to use the building for something, for it to be in use, for it to be productive, for it to uh, generate revenue for us and the village of Rio Doso. Um, so, What's odd to me is that she said we never approached her, which I, I that's think, just different. That that's but another thing, fine. parking on the sidewalk, our painters parked in the area that was cleared out, not on the sidewalk. 
So that it needs to be clear as well. Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and open it up to any others that might have something net new to add to the conversation. Um, and if so, feel free to come on down. Hello, if you don't mind raising your hand, stating your name, and tell, say that you'll tell the truth. Gwen Gomez, and I will tell the truth. Thank you. I think it's kind of hard to say only new information when everybody else has brought up old information. So I'm asking for a teeny bit of tolerance because everybody else had the opportunity to bring up old. Certainly. Thank you. And I'll make that part very quick. I own the property at 2904 Sutterth which is right next to the Tree Hill property. The Tree Hills did approach me just by an anonymous phone call about maybe parking, selling, or renting out some of our land prior to purchasing the property. The property was actually um, purchased by a grant deed December 27th. In October, they called and asked me, and I said, no, we're not interested, but thank you. They also, um, Mr. Trujillo, called me prior to the first meeting and told me about his project. I was on board with his project because he told me point blank, hey, we're coming from Los Lunas, we have a construction company, we have a large family, and we would like to develop that property for our family to stay in and to do some business. I thought, great. Finally, something for that building. I don't want to tell you how long I've owned that building, okay? Through thick and thin, and now we're working on it. So I thought that would be the highest and best use for that building to have it residential, to have someone own it who would come and stay. And then I thought, too, a home business. It wouldn't have a lot of traffic. Maybe all the neighbors could get along and say, hey, look, how many cars are you going to have? Two or three. Can we all work on it together? I can't remember who, and I don't know who to quote, because someone said, what about the spirit of cooperation? And in business, yes, we should have that. And we know that building has been a bad, bad scene. It's not your fault. But the biggest point to drive home is that is a distressed property. We all know that. And when people buy a distressed property, they don't pay top dollar for it, do they? Mr. Trujillo has stated that he was in the Army Corps of Engineers and construction. Buyer beware. When you buy it for $234,000, you know you're going to have obstacles. I've done it there in Rio Doso. I used to own the corner of Sutterth and Meacham, one of the worst investments I ever made. But we didn't come saying, hey, give us some parking. With that being said, they had full knowledge, and now they're coming to all of us to say, help. Okay, that's part of your job, and I get that. Okay, so much for my little history lesson on that. While I've been working on the property, I have pictures, and I'm sorry I didn't get to download them. If you want to see them, I can show them to you quickly. They stated in their previous meeting that they would be able to control an Airbnb. Family, cameras, mothers, relatives. Right now, as we speak, they have painters on that property. I have pictures, just because I happen to be up here, parked on the sidewalk already. They're not even utilizing the two spaces they have. Car doors wide open onto the sidewalk. That's dangerous. We can't have that there. And so if they want to control it, how are they going to control that Airbnb? Now we'll go to the parking places. We know they need three parking places. That's what's been drilled in everybody's head, correct? Three? Well, it depends. Okay, depends, three. Yes. Okay. So they have two in front. Okay. Now they need a third one. I don't know how many of you looked at the striping program that's going to be implemented. Tell me where the next parking place is that possibly that Airbnb people could use. Does anybody know where the closest parking place is? I can't say that we have that information, ma'am. Pardon? We don't have that information okay. in front of us. So I'm thinking... Hi, Adam. Adam will tell you the closest parking place per that plan is going to be um, Glenn's place next to Great Wall. That's the first parking place that's going to be available, even if you choose to let them have that. The next one is going to be past the barbershop. And then you know how there's that empty lot past the barbershop there? Are you familiar with that? There's going to be 12 up that way. That's it. So close your eyes and picture Airbnb, 3,600 square feet, 2,500 square feet. I'm not quite sure. We can go back and forth on that. 
Those people coming in late at night, softball tournament, whatever the case may be, nice family, they need a parking place. They've got two right there. I don't know how many of you seen those two parking places. The Toyota can't even park in there good, the Toyota truck that's there right now. So they got two parking places. Where are they gonna go? Again, I'm rehashing the fact they're gonna be parking on my land and that's gonna be a negative impact because there is no other parking. In closing on that, if you allow two parking places for them, what if I come to you guys and say, hey, you know what, I wanna put something here. Can you give me one of those off-street parking places, please? So again, I think the highest and best usage for that property would be um, somehow a single family residence and a home office business. But I just think we're really opening a big can of worms for the village if we allow the Airbnb. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Trio, you Mrs. Trio, you Yeah, thank you. And um, she, she is correct. When, when I did initially call her, that, that was the plan. You know, we, we thought maybe this would be a nice place where we can visit and, and have our family stay there. That was the initial conversation and initial plan. We made every effort in, in discussions with Stephanie and, and Samantha, and, and that's just not allowed per C2 zoning. So we had to change gears, and that's where we're at now. Um, regarding the, the construction, I, I have painters there, and they're, they're just trying to do their job. They're trying to do a job, and, and they, they're not at this point for two days or yesterday and today, they're not parking right next to the building because they're, they can't, because they're painting and, and they have machines and, and, uh, you know, our neighbor to the, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forget, You're Miss, Miss, uh, our neighbor to the west of us who, who just spoke, I'm sorry, I, I don't recall her name right now, but she actually spent the day, you know, kind of harassing our workers, taking pictures of our workers for, for no reason. I, I you know, we're trying to do something nice and, and, and make it more aesthetically pleasing, something that hasn't been done to that building for a while. And she she basically told them she, they couldn't even put a ladder within a foot of the property and said, get off my property, even though we do have some. And I will be going this week to show her that we do have some property on her side. But that, that it's I, I just it's very disheartening to see the the warm welcome that we have in this community by some of our neighbors. There are great neighbors. Our neighbor to the east has been amazing. Whatever you need, if you, you know, we know you're going through construction. We know that, you know, it's not gonna be permanent and we'll, maybe we can help each other out. That's the kind of neighbor in the small town that we're used to. So having everybody kind of attack us for no reason for a situation that we didn't create and continuously bringing up the amount of money that we paid for that. You say it's a bargain deal, but we're going through this day in and day out. We're here seven months later. Do you know the financial hardship that has been placed on us? Seven months paying a mortgage, paying utilities, coming to these meetings, pushing everything back. And hopefully that's going to be compensation that we get when we actually go to court. But right now, we have, we're have we out of pocket a ton of money. So if you think it's a great deal, it's not. And everybody keeps bringing that. That has nothing to do with what we're here in the meeting for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you for your comments. Anyone else that would like to comment on this? If not, we will continue on. Okay. Seeing no movement in the room, um, I will now close the uh, public input on this, and I'll open it up to commissioners to either ask questions of the Trujillos, of Sam, anything that you all need clarified on this topic. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I don't know which one of you Trujillos would like to comment on this, but um, are you going to stay with the program that you implemented last month about using the uh, entrance on the chiropractor side, Dr. Peebles' side, and entering those parking places through his, through their property? No, um, no, sir. We are actually, like uh, Samantha said at the beginning, we're doing a rolling curb to access those two. Okay. That would meet up with the adjacent. So, <clears throat> I did a little research. I'm sorry. Now. Research. I'm sorry. Uh, ba basically, just to kind of, what that does is it, it, it allows complete access from, you can get on from any part of our property. I think there's 70 feet or so. So you don't have to come in. 
There's no signs that need to be removed or no encroaching on anybody's property. It's just a rolling curb similar to what they just did uh, on the property just to the shopping center on the west of us. Okay. So I did a little research while we were talking, while you were talking here, and I looked up the Zillow listing for your property. And it says on Zillow there was zero parking spaces. Zillow is not the official listing. The, the official listing, and, and again, okay. that's... I don't know how why this is, but Future Real Estate is actually the listing agent. In the listing itself from Future, it actually had a copy of the easement. We have a letter from I'm, Future. I'm not that talking states. about the easement, sir. I'm not talking about the easement. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about well, parking on your property, your property alone, not someone else's property, but your property. Willow is not currently an active listing, and it's not the it's not the true listing. The listing is from Future Real Estate. Zillow is secondhand information. Information on Zillow is not accurate all the time, so it is not it is not what was on the listing for Future Real Estate. I, I wish you could have provided that to us so we could actually see it. I mean, we've been through this three times now, and you've yet to provide us any kind of information showing that there are designated parking spaces for your property. So there was not that we we had the the easement in the back for designated parking. We're we're not like I said. That's not your property, sir. We're trying to make the best of us, uh, the situation that we're in right now. We are going to to court um, to yeah. We that's work. that's old information again. So let's don't bring that up. I'm I'm asking about property on parking on your property per. I mean you got two now, but you're asking for a three bedroom unit here which requires three parking spaces. And we've already established in last month's meeting that you have to have three parking spaces that are yours, not not public parking spaces. So, the, the, you know, through our my own research, C2 zoning, if there's public parking within 500 feet, it can be utilized. It's not designated for your parking, though. You need three designated parking spaces for yours. If you're going to have three bedrooms, you need three designated parking spaces for your property. And they're not. And, and I believe just yeah, sorry, yeah, just to jump in there. Thank you, um, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Trujillo. I, I believe the current application would require a conditional use for the nightly rental. It would require a variance to the parking, and then it would be a variance again, essentially, for three bedroom rental and only having two parking locations mm -hmm. so I think what's the first thing at stake is the conditional use um, because that changes the usage of that property and then we would get to the variances with the parking from there mm -hmm. um, so I, I think there's a couple of ways that we could we could tackle this as a commission but um, it sounds like from the best of Mr. Fio's knowledge there there was parking with the easement or something but it does not appear to be the not case on his property. correct not on his property so um, other questions and, and um, from the commission to the Trujillos or to Sam. Yes, So I, you're taking a well, we can't even really say how many bedrooms it was before or, it, or it is in its current state. At least five bedrooms, and they're going to consolidate this house down to three. With some, with a game room, with a loft, um, and I know your wife has, in the past, told us that she's going to manage this. But how are you? I mean, how can you make us feel 100% sure that there's going to be some sort of policing? That there's only going to be three bedrooms used here. There's not going to be more bedrooms put up in other rooms, and we get inundated with cars parking everywhere. Is there something? Well, whenever, gonna, yeah, so whenever, whenever we submit plans, it ha we cannot waiver from those plans. I understand that. So man. that was per Samantha. So I, I don't understand really what. Um, okay, let me rephrase that then. So, as all of us, as village residents here, we see this all the time. A three bedroom house will have 10 people in it. And from your plans you're showing us here, you have plenty of room for more than three people or three bedrooms. 
how can you guarantee us that you're not going to rent it to someone who's going to bring a, a family of 12 in here when they're all going to ride two to a car? I think that's maybe it's probably a fair question for you, but an unfair question for us because I don't think anybody in Rio Doso can 100% whenever they are renting say what people are going to do or not going to do. No as a rental, as we have rental properties, we make things very clear in our agreements, in our contracts. Does it always happen? Most of the time, yes. But you know what? We are working with human beings and human beings make choices. But this is the thing that we are, we are just wanting to make this work. We, as of right now, we don't have designated parking. We created designated parking with the addition of the 12 public parkings. When, and the, there are, I'm looking at the plot right now. There's three public parkings within 60 feet. There's two public parking spaces within 150 feet and 10 within 300 feet. So that in addition, to what we have created. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chair, if I may clarify, yep. um, I don't find that in the code to be true about a public parking in a C2. Um, what the code does read is a change of use or occupancy of the building. Any changes of use or occupancy of any building, including additions thereto requiring more parking, shall not be permitted until such additional parking spaces required by this article are furnished. And um, it says this provision does not apply to buildings within principal permitted uses in C1, 2, and 3 prior to August 1st of 1999. Um, this is a conditional use, so that's why we're here, and we need to make sure that the parking is established before we allow the use. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. So my statement around conditional use is the primary thing is inaccurate. We'd have to establish parking before we can I think so. even talk about the conditional use. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions from the commission? I, I do have one if, if the commission will allow it. Uh, have you, I think to Mr. Uh, Commissioner Richardson's point, have you engaged in a local property management company? Have you gotten somebody that, I know you mentioned you have family here, um, but I, I was curious if you have engaged with a local property management company. I have not because it, as, I did say last time it was a possibility that we could go with them, um, but without knowing what our future is, then it would um, not make too much sense. I mean, I could have, but as of right now, we don't know what is going to be decided. We don't know what this building is going to entail. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions for the Trujillos? Do we have any comments? Samantha, one clarification. Um, we were talking about how many spaces does the three bedroom unit require? It's one parking space per bedroom. They actually have five, though, five bedrooms, but she had agreed to reduce it down to three because of parking spaces. But um, in my opinion, they don't have the adequate amount of room for three spaces. Okay. So now we're down to two. Okay. And one uh, point of order that I didn't get to. We did receive uh, a number of letters. This was back in the public input, and I just want to make it known for the record that we did receive these in an appropriate time, and the board or the commission did read them. So that was during the public input. That was not uh, discussed prior. So who came up with those? The suggested motion. Mm -hmm. The suggested motion was based from the, the staff generally, and it's they, written so always in the positive. Um, you can read the staff report prior to that, but the 
Motions are always written positive. And that's according to Robert's rules, I believe. They, they say you have to be positive about everything and tell everybody's negative, yeah. essentially. <laughs> so that, I think that that's the um, difference between the recommendation and then the suggested motion. So what you're telling me is uh, even if you were even if you disagree with the motion that you are making, you would make the positive you, motion. You would make and the positive. would vote it down. Vote it according to their belief and the adherence to the code. Um, oh. If you remember, at one point I made a motion and then voted no. And this was meetings ago. But. <clears throat> Anyone? Already? Hmm? I think I would entertain a motion. Go ahead, Ron. Based upon the foregoing findings of fact, per 54-68 and 54-100 of the Village Code, I move to grant the requested conditional use approval for case CU-2023-179 with the condition stated in the case report. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to a roll call vote. Stephanie? Just for clarification, in the motion, does it grant for the deviation from the parking requirements to the two allowance? Or are you going to separate them? Do you want to keep it all combined? I think it, the intent of the motion was to keep it all combined. Yeah. Just want to make sure I have it written down. Do you mean two? Uh, you mean two spaces? It's two spaces? Yes. Yeah. That's what we're being presented with. Right, that's the presentation. Yeah. Commissioner Bach? No. Commissioner Byers? Nay. Commissioner McLean? No. Commissioner Richardson? No. Commissioner Rickson? No. Commissioner Williams? No. The request was denied. Thank you. We'll move on to the next bullet point. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Trujillo. All right, we're moving to 6B. Um, this would be a conditional use approval request, CU 2023-206. Uh, Samantha, will you tell us a little bit about this? Thank you, Chairman. Um, our applicant today, Scott Stevens, is requesting to add an additional two food trucks in conjunction with the existing food truck um, that is in current operation at Mount High. Mountain Adventure business located at 1056 Meacham Drive. Um, Thank you. Would you all like to come forward? And the applicant is here. Hi. Hi, how are you? Do you mind uh, raising your hand and um, say you'll tell the truth? Thank you, sir. So Sam gave us a little bit of an overview, but what are you looking to do? With the I'd like to add two more food trucks. To, uh, well, we've got I was one just calling you. <coughs> Sorry, continue. Up top, and uh, we'd, we'd like to add two more. We've got the uh, all the infrastructure, the plumbing, uh, grease trap, electrical, gas, um, plenty of parking, and uh, you know, we'd like to bring. Probably we haven't we haven't tried to source any any new trucks. I'd like to bring some, maybe a different, different type of eatery into Reynosa that we don't have. You know, kind of stay, we stay away from what we have so many of. But uh, you know, it's, we've also got Anaheim Jacks, and we, you know, we can't feed everybody that comes, and so many places are closed. <clears throat> that it'd be nice to have more options, especially on that side of town. More so than just food trucks, we'd like to create an outdoor uh, food court, you know, and uh, make something pretty neat there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, anything else to add? If not, we'll open it up to public input. Um, and so during public input, people might comment, and you have the ability to respond. It's a cross-examination. Okay. Um, so at this time, I'll open it up to public input for anybody online or here today to speak for or against this item. Come on down, sir. 
And if you don't mind just sitting on the front row while they make their comment. Hello. My All right. Tell Morris. Do you mind to tell the truth, swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth? I sure will. Good. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm just like, I don't know if we're speaking of this. I, mean, I don't have any objection to the food trucks or anything, but I have a property and... Uh, Commissioner uh, McElwain, I'm sure you're familiar with the property because I bought it from you. But yeah. <laughs> when it was uh, uh, originally there, it was just a vacant lot with trees on it, okay? And so they developed this parking lot, which is part of your uh, package here. It's page 48 of 145. This is the parking lot that uh, is adjacent to the property, and I guess it's being used for the property for uh, the purpose of having these food trucks. You know, it used to have a batting cage there and it had a, a climbing device and that type of things. And those have all been eliminated. And uh, so uh, they're going to bring in and make a food court out of it. But my question is, because I have the property, if you can look right here, I have this property right here that's adjacent to to the property. Now, in this corner right here, we have about three uh, 1940 trucks. We They just brought in a, a metal container, and they're all, and it's turning into a store yard or a junkyard or whatever. I, my question is, are they gonna use all this material that they're bringing in to establish this food court, or we, uh, I just want to address this issue because it's not being used as a uh, parking lot, you know, for the establishment anymore. It's been used for a storage yard for some type of a construction thing. So my question as an individual, I'd just like to know, what are, are, are they going to use these, uh, the storage container and these trucks as part of these two additional trucks that are coming in here? Uh, what are the uses of these things? I've, I spoke with uh, uh, the, the code enforcement person, Mr. Robert Simpson, uh, and he went over and looked at it and agreed that you know some of the materials and stuff like that are not in the you know in the code and should be removed. But yeah. my question is, I'd just like to have some type of explanation of what we're going to do with all this stuff that they're bringing in here with these trucks. Some people might call them antiques, but I, I say that they're salvage trucks or junk trucks, you know? And all the materials that they're bringing in, yeah, are I, they going to use these in I think conjunction with you can them? come on down and... What, are yeah. they going to be removed? Or Thank you, sir. Why don't we have them come on? Uh, excuse me. I'm going to have to listen. Yeah, come on down, please. Process, so I can't have to, if we get closer, I... Okay. The... Container he's speaking about, we removed that from the ropes course today, and it has been moved down there. We're storing some stuff as we're preparing that area. Um, the trucks he's talking about, they will be used in a fashion within there. They're not going to stay where you can see them, and uh, you know it's they'll be moved. And, and all that excess material and all that yeah, stuff that will be just moved. moved. Just be a parking lot. Betcha. You okay, bet. that was my question and my concern, you and that's you. just what I'd like to have addressed. So, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the you question. Very much. I appreciate thank you. It. Okay, thank you a lot. Thank All you right. for addressing the question, sir. Other comments or questions on this topic? Okay, thank you. At this time, I'll close the public input and we'll open it up to the board. and. They might have some questions for you, so it might make sense for you to sit. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any Not questions that easy, for right? the applicant on this topic? I think we had a good one addressed by the, the gentleman, and I forgot your name. I apologize um, about the material down there. Any other questions for the applicant or for Sam? I hadn't considered that in my staff report, um, screening operations from the residential use down below. Okay. So if you want to feel inclined to include that. Thank you. That's a good comment. Um, I'll, I'll take uh, the first step. I, I'm looking at your, your plan, um, and you're going to have the food truck backing uh, meet you in there? One of them, yes, sir. One of them. Um, and there's no plans to screen in between where the food truck is and where the roadway is? No. 
Um, so it's not to enclose it with a fence or anything like that? That is fenced in. It is fenced it in is right fenced here? In, yes, there's, there's actually two fences around that. Okay. But is it uh, visible? So if we see, my concern, looking at the back of a food truck might not be as appealing to the eye as looking at the front of the food truck. Okay. And so with this plan, that was the concern that I had, was it was backing right up to that. Right. Rather than on the other side here, is there a reason that you had it on the Meacham side versus? Yeah, I wanna, we're considering doing some other stuff we may bring up to the uh, planning and zoning in the future. And uh, I wanted to have that fence line facing the golf course open. Gotcha. So. Okay, so that would be the thought process there. I can, uh, I can require the food truck that is facing there to have some sort of a final graphic or something on there so it's not a plain trailer yeah. or a truck. So it will be more aesthetic, I guess. Yeah, that, that might be good. Um, and I think that was the only question I had, commissioners. Uh, uh, no, I mean, what? so like, uh, like Anaheim Jacks, what's your normal like wait time during the, during the busy time? We get up to a couple hours by noon, and it'll remain that way. Okay. What's your? Would you have some sort of idea on operating times for this food court? Eleven to <clears throat> nine, eight, nine o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Maybe a ten o'clock on weekends. Something good to eat there. Pardon me. Something good to eat. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's all. I hope so. <laughs> Commissioners, in the past, we did require our food trucks to be in conjunction with an operating business, their hours to be synced up. Um, I will say in our existing code, it doesn't read like that. So that's going to be up to your all's discretion on how you think it'll impact the neighborhood because it is a conditional use. And that's the current one. I think we're mm -hmm. trying to change that in the future, correct? Mm-hmm. So the food truck you have now, what's up? What's the hours on it? We uh, we have the arcade portion of the business open all the time, and for that reason, so it is operating within those hours. Okay, which hour? I don't know. It's uh, we <clears throat> through the week. It's eleven to five. On the weekends, it's eleven to eight. Okay, you're not partying all night long. Pardon me. You're not partying all night long. No. Okay. Right yes, ma'am. Just want to make sure where we're looking. Thank you. And so you're requesting the two additional trucks have the same operating hours? That Unless we can go a different route, but yes, that will be fine, sir. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Comments? If none, I'll, I'll, I would entertain a motion. I think um, st uh, Sam mentioned that we might need to have screening in between the operating business and the residential property uh, included in the conditional use, and I would recommend that we include that. Um, Where is the residential property next to this? The, I believe it was the property that the gentleman pointed oh, out. Oh, there's like a I, that's pond down that corner that's fenced around. Got so a fence there. Is there? Yeah. It's around that pond. There's a wooden fence around that so this, Right, this and they didn't, uh, and they, uh, I remember uh, we did not allow access for traffic to come out okay. this way. So, would that be so that's fenced. And, uh, um, without being on site, it's hard for me to say, but if you all just generally say screen operations from residential yeah. uses, that'd be fine. Okay. You're talking about the food court being up Where here, which the, the building... <laughs> kind of screens it, and then you've got golf course yeah, right here, and you've got way. cemetery across okay. the street. Yeah. Sounds like you aren't concerned. Not going to wake those guys. The cemetery. <laughs> no. <laughs> if they wake up, we're in trouble. I would like to reiterate what you were saying about the back side of the, the, the um, food trailer oh, yeah. court, whatever, anyways. It, it's in keeping with, you know, they, they've allowed uh, containers, with the, uh, uh, you know, and y'all cited that one and right. painted it, you know, and it's the same reason. And uh, and you said you would do something graphic-wise to soften that. Uh, that. Yes, so, yeah, I'd just like to see that. So you would want to add that as a condition? 
I think so, yeah. I just uh, make sure that it's... Concealment. Aesthetically pleasing. Yes. Yeah. All cards yeah, yeah, not just a... Aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody want to offer up a motion for us then? I have one more question. I noticed you do have an area for grease trap, that kind of thing, for the current truck. Yes, Is that going to be adequate? I guess they'll figure that out when they come around to permit. It's a thousand gallon grease trap. It's, it's very large. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a large capacity trap. You got the thumbs up from the back. Yeah. On the grease. It's a the grease trap. <laughs> <laughs> That's that the formal a, approval process now. <laughs> <laughs> when we increase that number, will they reevaluate the situation with dumpsters, et cetera, to be sure that they are adequate? Okay. You know, Sam? Um, if he needs to request additional dumpsters, he'll need to reach out to Jerry Parsons with the Solid Waste Department and, and purchase those if you do need more. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Richardson. Based upon the foregoing findings of fact 54-68, 54-150, and 54-100 of the Village Code, I move to grant the requested conditional use approval case for CU-22-20. 23-206 with a condition stating in the case report and also whatever you added as well. Right. It's Stephanie, that was the visuals on the food truck was added, making it aesthetic. aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetically pleasing. Are we going to leave that discretion up to you? Yeah, I, I think, the, I think the, the truck itself it's not necessarily just the storage, but it, it sounds like we're going to offer you know, appropriate. The truck itself. The food truck. The food truck. The food truck, yeah. yeah. We have in the past requested that they have appropriate concealment of mm -hmm. dumpsters, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know how that's going to work out with this. And in the back of that building. I think within the condition stated, um, it might be covered. Yeah. Cool. So I have, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll move to a roll call vote. Commissioner Bach? Aye. Commissioner Byers? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. We'll move on then and uh, close that one out. Move to our next one, which I believe is Mr. Duke. Mr. Duke. Yeah. Um, Stephen, when when are you all going to be open for adding these units on? And are you looking for food trucks or you're not? Yes. Okay, because since we advertise this, we've received a few calls, and so I guess we'll send them your way. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Sam. Um, all right, the next one, uh, letter C on our quasi-judicial quasi public hearing. Uh, Sam, what can you tell us about this application? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Duke is requesting approval for site plan and concept approval to convert a traditional lodging facility into a multifamily housing development at 311 Meacham Drive. Um, right now they are um, rented out uh, by the night. He's looking to convert them to um, more of a legal agreement where there's the land in common. However, they'll own in individual cabins. Um, would you like to come up and explain your intent? Um, since this is an existing property, um, we're just having him do the site plan and concept approval as well as um, our next agenda item. So we'll go ahead and, and handle this first. Thank you. Mr. Duke. Yeah, this is a property. Oh, um, I got to swear you in. I'm sorry. Do you promise to tell the truth, nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, this is a property that I guess was started to be built in the 40s, and it's 20, uh, 21 freestanding log cabins, and they have been nightly rentals all the way 70, 80 years now. 
And uh, my idea is to sell them as individual condominiums where it'll be run by the association of the 20 or 21 owners. And um, we know we have to put separate electric meters. We know the parking requirement. Um, we have a lawyer in Albuquerque who's done draft condominium documents to prevent people from having boats and RVs and all those kinds of things. And uh, I just think it would provide 20 individual units that somebody can buy for about $100,000. Uh, we plan on financing them 20% down, make it easy for first entry level homeowners. And uh, I'm kind of tired of running a nightly business. It's a grind. Certainly. Um, thank you. And, and anything else that we should be aware of for your no, application? No, that's a big concept. I mean, you know, I'm here to answer any questions anybody might have and hope I have all the answers. Yeah, thank you. Um, if nothing else from you, sir, we'll open it up for public input. Um, at this time, you, you can cross-examine anybody that has public input. Any comments on this item? Seeing... Yes, sir, come on down. Yes, sir. We'll have to get you. To, we'll have to swear you in, so you'll have to say your name. Tell, you tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I just want to know. We were on the back side. All three of our lots are on the back side of the property. Is there going to be some privacy fencing? I know your fence is falling down back there right now. Um, on the side of the hill back there. We're not opposed to putting up fencing. It's not a problem. Well, I just know um, if you're going to do this. Uh, all of the property owners on the back side, there's been a history of people coming down off the hill, walking through I the properties. I think there's only one house back there. No, there's two. There's two immediately that back up to you. And then the real estate company has some houses back there. And I'm, do you have the Bear Mountain Lodge? I do. That's yours. And the, between Bear Mountain Lodge is where the real estate Oh, the real estate office. Century. Yes, and they have those lots. And then there's a judge in San Antonio who has the house next to us. And then I have my house and then two lots on 120 Alonzo. I'm just concerned with all of these being rented out. Uh, all the traffic that we have back there because it's not fenced. And kids and beer cans and everything get thrown down in there off that hill. Do you know where you built that fence? In the very back the of the back, property? Yeah, the back of the yeah, property. Yeah, I'm just aware that there's one house, if, you're, if you enter the property on the left-hand side down that hill, well, there's, there's one house. There's there. two houses. Okay, somehow I missed one. But, but I'm not opposed to fencing the property, not a problem. Yeah. Six-foot wood fence? Behind, yeah, I mean, the, the fence that you put up temporarily, I'm assuming you did it. How long have you owned the property? This was put up about eight, nine years ago. No, I've had it for... 15 or 20 and you years. have that vacant little building back there that's falling apart. A little apart. shed. Yeah. And then all of the trees that were cut down but not removed. That's all. I had to move several trees off my property, but they cut those down. Okay. And there's one mark that's leaning that could fall on our house. And I've talked to the to the uh, forestry. Uh, they're supposed to get with somebody and get that. I'd be happy to meet you over there if you show it to me. Sure, sure. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, I just... My, my big concern is I know through the history of that and then the, uh, the other cabin that, that holds like 14 people that's up above you. Um, it's not mine. No, no, it's not yours. But people would come around and then people would come down. The, right above there, they'd sit there and drink beer at night. You know the old train that used to be there with the bell? The little barbecue yes. thing that was back there? Yes. They'd sit back there and we'd... Uh, Cans and trash and stuff. My personal opinion is, you know, right now there's different people there every single weekend. Sure. I Once somebody buys it and they're living there, I think there'll be a lot less shins and beer cans because yeah. most people take pride in ownership and. Yeah. Well, when your fence was up until it blew down, there was it was pretty we'd quiet. Be happy to put a fence up because there is noise, no you know, with the, with the rentals. Like any place, y'all know, there's you know, yeah. come up to Rio Dosen party and. 
have fun. I'm, it's a party I'm place. Gonna, yeah, I'm not opposed <laughs> to that. Other than the beer cans flying down here and bottles yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I would yeah. think that that would be less with actually people that live here and work here living in those units okay. would be less yeah. of a problem well, than the transient people that are different every weekend. Sure. Thank you, sir. If you'll give me your number, I'll, I'd be happy I'll meet to. with you this week um, whenever it's convenient. Sure, if you have a pen, I'll uh, Yeah, do you mind waiting until we get the right? Sure. Okay, okay. okay. I'll catch you after me. I mean, that's, that's it. That's, I was, I'm just concerned with that, not knowing what you were going to do with that. Sure. Problem. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, and, Sam, there's not a change in zoning that we're looking for on this. Just cite a plan and approval. So there should be between C2 and residential screening between those two properties, right? Yes, but this will, um, in essence, be residential. But we aren't doing a rezone, so it would still be C2, right? Uh, the use. The use will be. Residential. Okay. Regardless, I think if we can have screening no, 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 between them. Okay. Great. Thank you. Other comments from uh, Rick? It looks like you have your hand up. Would you like to comment? Yes. Uh, I swear to tell the truth. My wife and I have properties at 111 and 109 Virginia Canyon, and the proposed map that I'm looking at um, intersects, I guess, all three of our lots together. And I'm just kind of curious how that part of, I guess, the tip of 311, as it would face north, is going to be utilized what's going to be built in there what is going to change you know when we had the deforestation here seven eight nine years ago and they cut down all the trees the noise has been just tremendous as it comes off and now with increased more tenants or traffic or people um i share the gentleman's sentiment about I can't tell you the number of times when I've been there people come walking up through my yard I'll go ahead and close the public portion of this and we'll open it up to commissioners any questions for Mr. Duke Mr. Chairman Commissioner Richardson yes I hate to be the one asking questions all day but Mr. Duke to follow up on a comment you made a while ago you were going to sell these to be primary residences they're not short-term rentals they're short-term rentals now. We anticipate on selling them to people who are going to live in occupied right. buildings. Do you correct? have any way to, to ensure that? I mean, I know that's going to be hard to do, police, to police that every day. But Well, I did have one uh, discussion with my realtor because um, he asked me, suppose some guy wants to come in and buy 10 of them. And I told him, no, I don't want to sell them as investors. I just want to sell them to individual people. And we're even, what I want to do and what I'm planning on doing is to finance it for people so they can move in with 15 to 20 percent down and then we'll finance it for them for 30 wow. years okay. so i do not now my realtor says i have to be careful about discriminating against people but um but no i i don't want to sell it to investors uh, however um we are we've done we're working on draft condominium documents and um the lawyer asked me, did I want to exclude people from being able to rent it out? And I said no, because that might make the difference if somebody can buy it or not. Hmm. So um, we just have the possibility of being asked. So it is a possibility that somebody that does buy one, maybe they just want to be here for ski season or maybe they want to be here for race season and then they might rent it out. Right. Are most of these... Are they one bedrooms or two bedrooms or most? I don't know how to answer most. Most I mean, of them, I believe, are zero bedrooms. They're just like one large room. There are a couple of one bedrooms. There's a couple of two bedrooms. There's one three bedroom, but most of them are kind of an efficiency kind of okay. place. Well, I was just asking. You know, you know, as a business owner, it's tough to get help here. Long-term rentals are what we're shooting for the most. So. Well, it's really tough to, to run a nightly yes, business. Yes, it is. It's yeah. tough to control this stuff. Whatever. Just, just a point. Thank you. Um, along the same line, as far as uh, it would be one thing for somebody to buy a, uh, uh, I mean, like if I wanted an investment, I could buy one and then rent it out long-term and still it would be an investment property, but it would still be towards the 
the, the realm of, you know, um, workforce housing. Uh, I think what we're trying to, to uh, encourage people to steer away from in this situation is uh, um, the nightly rental. I mean, we've got had a proliferation of nightly rental through the uh, B and B. Situation. I'm aware of that for sure. And uh, there's which has created a burden for the uh, um, you know workforce housing. And that's what uh, I think our interest is. And it's one thing, like I say, to buy it and rent it out long term, 30 days or more, uh, because I consider even the uh, the track people to be part of our community. They're just seasonal. Yeah. They're, they're not here. Uh, they're here to work and uh, they're, they're not, you know, throwing parties and all that good stuff. And uh, they're trying to make a living anyways. Um, can I, not to interrupt you, but I am going to interrupt okay. you. Sorry about that. Go the for question it. for Sam, though, on the same vein that you all are talking about, if we approve this site concept, it would still be C2 zoning. So if an individual wanted to have a nightly rental, they would have to go through a conditional use because it's C2 zoning. Question mark. No, because <laughs> right? they've given them the permission already by giving them the condition. I, I don't know if we have that fully best fleshed out. So technically what he's asking for is the approval to move into the conditional use of a multifamily occupancy. Now the short-term rentals go under residential uses. So unless he would provide something privately to the tenants, I'm not sure where the discrepancy would come for us to be able to limit or approve by a conditional use that type of use on the hearing. Because our overlay zone, we have condominiums that have short-term rentals in them and they're privately owned. Mm -hmm. But those condominiums, are they in C2? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My hope was that you would write it into the condo bylaws, mm -hmm. that you could rent it long-term but not short-term. Like a homeowner's association for a, uh, a neighborhood okay. can do that there kind of thing. There are some condo associations that do prohibit their... Um, right, their, their owners from renting it long term yes. or, or short term. And yeah, yeah, and that that's my hope is that yeah. uh, your your condo association bylaws would uh, you know be written as to uh, no short term rental. Generally, less than thirty days is that cut off. Is mm -hmm. right, it, right. Yeah. Short term is anything less than thirty days. Mm -hmm. Because right now you're running it basically as a short-term rental because you're doing nightly. It's a nightly rental. rental. It nightly yeah. Rental. yeah, it's a traditional but lodging. Yeah. You and your staff are in charge. If we were to open this up, <laughs> and you have 21, different and we have owners. 21 different owners. I mean, I would like to see. You know, the idea about us putting either or you putting a covenant or you know, bylaws into the condo association you're going to create to do this that that not be allowed. Hmm. Interesting. Because we really need to, you know, we're trying to figure short-term rentals versus workforce housing. <clears throat> and anybody buying up here right now, everybody wants to do short-term rentals, which is squeezing all the, the workforce people out of here. So... And yeah, I, I, I think that this is drilling on the point of is this actual site plan and concept approval or is it a conditional use? No, because it's a principal permitted use in the C2. We're here for the site plan, which is him adding additional units. And so he is adding additional units to what's there? These here on the lot above the road we're posing to vacate, won't they be additional? Well, we're toying with the idea of putting three additional units on that big piece of land where there's nothing at all, but not in the back area where the other gentleman was talking about. Currently, there's three, I guess they're called RV spaces there that we've never used uh, in, the, in the, I think, 18 years that I've owned it. But there's electrical hookups, water, and sewer where they used to rent nightly RV spaces. Okay. And that's there now. So the thought was perhaps by 
three little cabins and drop them in there, one, two, three, and give us three more units to sell. But nothing beyond that. But I think where we're looking at, <clears throat> at this point, you're in charge of 21 units that you can control because you own all of them. Correct. But then if we have 21 different owners and they all live out of state, things go haywire. They're not here to police the properties. They're not here to address it. And then it becomes more of a concern for the whole village than it does for as you as one owner. You know what I mean? You see where we're coming from? But you'll have the homeowners association, <clears throat> correct? Like a con you'll have a condo association? Yes, yes. It's already this thick. And I haven't even, don't even understand half of the language, and I speak pretty good English. So, but we can suggest that they put in your covenants. However, we still have no control over that as a village, yeah, and whether it's, it's put in or whether your homeowners association enforces it. Unless it's a conditional That's use. an expensive thing yeah. to people who can't afford a home. Yeah. The agenda item before us is for the site plan. If you'll see, we did do a development review internally amongst the directors. Um, there was an additional mm -hmm. egress that was notated that um, they'd like to see for emergency services and also um, notes with solid waste wanting to add additional trash cans. And so... Well, and the other thing they wanted was a turnaround space mm -hmm. for fire, etc., which is not currently on that plan. So since it's a site plan, we can't enforce conditions. I, said, I, mm -hmm. I don't understand how it's a site plan. It's not, really. This is for site <laughs> plan approval. Um, yeah. Because he'll be removing, vacating all of those lot lines that you're seeing there. And vacating the hashed out mark, which is the next item. Right. But... Being that he's going to convert to the long term, um, there are some items the directors would like uh, implemented, and so um, those will need to be enforced upon the applicant so that we make sure that we have a safe development. Right. But I, th I think my point is that it's changing the use, so it would be a conditional use to multifamily. Uh, it's a principal permitted use within the C2 district. I thought it was a conditional use. It is a conditional use. Multifamily? Mm -hmm. On C2. How did we go? They up? have to, it's a Remember conditional use, it? must require a minimum of four or more to develop and be approved. Um, in the staff recommendation, we've asked that no further conditional use need to be sought because the use of the property as a multi tenant facility is already present. So okay. this is simply just the conversion. The reason why it's a site plan and concept approval is because it's a designation and change of the intended use of the development of the property, which does fall in line with the general statement of uh, Section 5467. Okay. okay, thank you. Yes, go ahead. What's go the ahead. size of your properties total here that you're putting these or have these cabins on? I don't know. Half acre guesstimate. I can show you on this little site plan. Well, yeah, I think I it says it's really small print. <laughs> it might say an inch is a thousand feet. I don't know. One inch equals 40 feet. One inch is 40 feet? No, that's what it says. Yeah. Okay. May I approach you? Yeah, come on up. This is scales, master. Um, Johnny, those are the little not cabins necessarily. Mm -hmm. this was and you'll just see on this printed. piece of land, mm -hmm. there's no cabins at all. So right. you can see there's one, two, three, four that fit there just fine. It was a copy mm -hmm. of so a copy our thought that was we would put one, two, three on this site, maybe, depending on how quick those sales were. Mm -hmm. uh, this here on your property, right. what is this? This, one this is a building that was built in the 1950s, I uh -huh. think that encroaches on village property. Yes. So the second part, the next item up see if I can find is to see there. about the village vacating that, or else I have to tear that building down. I was going to say. So either I need to tear it down or I need to 
ask the village to give me that 10 feet or 8 feet or whatever, 5 feet, whatever it is. That's the Where's the parking for that? I mean, well, that's a storage shed. It's not a dwelling. This so is, it's an accessory all of unit? These, this has parking in front of it. This has parking, 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 parking. Right. This is a storage shed. It's a building, though. I'd rather not take it down. I'd like the condo association of people to be able to store stuff in it. But that's the next agenda item. Is the replay or is the vacation? Yeah. Um, so one, what uh, the lower section next to Meacham is a stated fifty-three thousand three hundred twenty-seven square feet. The second lot is a stated thirty-four thousand one hundred twenty-five square feet. For the assessor data. An acre of 4360 square feet. 43560 is, is an acre. Yeah. Okay. So that's two acres? Yeah. Just over. Almost. Yeah. Almost. So that's a um, uh, tenth of an acre per unit, roughly, for 21. Sam, I think some of the commissioners are. are I don't want to be thick, but I, I think we're under, trying to understand why it's his site. Commissioner Michelino was asking me this yeah. versus a conditional use because it's changing the state of use. And Stephanie, you gave us reasoning, but I, I'm not sure we followed that reasoning. Is there another way to describe it as why it wouldn't move to a multifamily? Um, well, the use is already there and easily converted into that because of the structures and his intent. So the site plan and concept approval is simply um, pursuant to the development ex and expansions that may be proposed at the site. Um, the purpose of the review is to relieve demonstrable adverse impacts to the development upon in investment in public roads, drainage facilities, sewage facilities, etc., and to conserve the value of buildings and ensure that the regulations of the articles are with upheld. Um, so single family and duplex development, um, which this is more of a single family, even though it's lumped as multifamily because it has up to four or more uh, site plans for single family and duplex development shall be reviewed and acted on only by uh, the planning administrator in accordance with subsections E of the 5467 in pursuant to districts located within the R1 and R2 zonings. Right, but Mr. Duke said he's not building anymore. So we aren't the, well, I said I, I might build nine. three. But is that the application here today? Oh, no, 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 no okay. not at all. So then there's no changing to the site plan. I'm not changing a thing. Right. And today. Just. And, and according to you, Stephanie, it is a principal permitted use, so... We're having him add that egress onto Randall. Yes. Uh, additional dumpsters. Um, so we can add conditions noted. then. Mm -hmm. the direct, yeah, you can add those so, to this. To the commissioner's point, if we wanted to add the condition. They want to see an additional fire hydrant in there. Or if we wanted to add the conditions of new short-term rentals, that would be possible, even though it's not a conditional reuse. We have an overlay <laughs> zone that says otherwise. Yep. You can't control it, Carol. Uh, and I, maybe that's, we are making changes, so it is a change in use. Um, and so the site concept, we can ask and require him to have lighting, lighting, egresses, et cetera, which are conditions, but we can't add any other conditional use. Well, the overlay zone comes that. that. Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. But it doesn't prevent him from having, uh, uh, putting it in his condo association uh, bylaws, <laughs> right? right? No. That's a private agreement. It would be a private right. agreement. Right. I understand. And I, we can't ask him to do it. We can't ask we him can to do that, I guess. Or expect it to work. <laughs> True. Time bounding it, though, would be something that could be an option you know, for five years after we do this, maybe. But we don't have any control over that, yes. No, we're swapping a short term rental for a possible short term rental. So, um, according to 54106 for the short term residential overlay zone, uh, the applicant. 
applicability, applicability of the no. requirements Maybe. is um, this zone applies to all non-commercial residential but, properties. Right, which this will still be C2, but it'll be residential C2. Yeah. So it's you'd be going progress. by the use of the property. Right. So we have a lot of hey, single-family homes are that are do? located within a commercial. Because it is a single-family home and has existed as such, they are able to still pursue under 54106. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it's abundantly clear, and I think there might be issues uh, in the future, right? Because it is multifamily, like, it's nightly right now. He's adhering to the primary use with the C2 as a lodging facility. When we convert it into this site plan, it would be individual units, and so that it would be a single unit nightly rental on a C2, even though it's in within a condo association. And, it, and I don't know how we're addressing that today within our condo associations. We're just trying to get the site plan improved with the egress, the traffic, the lighting, the landscaping, yes, yeah. the dumpsters. And a turnaround for emergency vehicles. If the commission has any how can we, uh, thoughts, or I would entertain a motion. Those aren't in there. I mean, what I have doesn't have that. The site plan I have does not have an egress onto Randall. It does not have any kind of an emergency lane designated and turnaround site at the end for That's them true. to be able to get in and out to adequately take care of fires. And so we need to make the requirements to him, and then whatever the commission approves, then it's so, above and beyond what's been existing for 60 years, then he'll have to construct those prior to moving forward with his plan for multi-housing. To have him draw it in? Future mm -hmm. Yeah, it should have been that. We're approving something that isn't okay. Yeah, we could have had him go back and add that in. I mean, just so we're all Yeah. It's he needs to have it done anyway. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, what are your, what are your thoughts? It's at your uh, incomplete site plan. That's the right thing. Come on. Shelf this for 30 days, let him get an egress and egress and come back with another site. Well, there's got an entrance and exit. He's been working for 60 years, and we've had police there before. There, There is a. Um, I mean, you know, that they can get in and out. Cars come. Yes, but what we allowed back in, when did you say it was built? Oh, it's 1940s? Uh, what we or allowed my back time, then and worked back then doesn't necessarily work anymore. We have big fire trucks now compared to the 1940s. And you want to change it, so yeah. it has to be brought up. And the if there's a fire at the front entrance and they can't get to the back, but we can do that. We'll um, work with you to get the comments from the directors incorporated into your site plan, and you'll have to have somebody draw those on there. That way they have a visual of what will be required of you. We can incorporate that into the recommendation, right? Uh, yeah, you or can Or is do it that. the um, request of the commission that we see that before we vote on it? It's not up to us. No. It's up to the... <laughs> well, it's up to for yeah. ease, you could just say um, incorporate all changes listed in the development review checklist. Impact categories. Mm -hmm. Is that what we want to do? They can move forward. Did you get that, Stephanie? I think we're going to incorporate the recommended changes for the directors as part of the approval of the site plan. Required. Required. Yeah. You're okay with that, If I don't have a choice, I have to be. You're a businessman. You know what it takes to make money, so. <laughs> it takes money to make money. Yes, sir. I think sure does. I know you. Yes. He'll do the right thing. I'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion if we have, are comfortable with that. So to incorporate changes as noted by development review uh, prior to obtaining building permits and issuance. Correct, yes. Impact. In the impact category reviews. I can't hear you. You're talking about the impact category reviews, the suggestions the in the impact review category? checklist. Yes. Yes. That. That's included. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Yes. Based upon foregoing findings of per fact 54-67 and 54-100. 
of Village Co. and I move to grant the site plan concept approval for case number SP 2023-229 with the conditions stated in the report that's on the impact categories list and the assessment impact check checklist provided to this commission by the directors. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Let's go to a roll call. Commissioner Baugh? Aye. Commissioner Byers? Aye. Commissioner McLena? Aye. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. I'm sorry, what was that? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Uh, Commissioner Rigsby? Aye. Commissioner Williams? No. Motion carries with five positive and one negative. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Duke, and you're here for the next one as well. So um, we are going to move to uh, the next item, which is a petition for vacation of public right-of-way 2023-230. Sam, uh, do you mind giving us a report on this one? Yes, it's the same uh, tract of land that Mr. Duke is proposing that we vacate public right-of-way. Um, so that he can continue with this um, development that he uh, just had explained. Um, all costs would be bared by him for the replatting and um, the cost to purchase public right away. And Thank you. Anything this is else? a recommendation to the governing body. Yeah. Anything else to add, Mr. Duke? Nothing else. Okay. Um, commissioners, any questions for uh, Mr. Duke about the vacation? And again, this is just recommendation, so it goes to Village Council. Oh yeah, we do need to open it up for public hearing. Any comments on the this item? Thank you. And aren't you? Don't you have buildings on the right of way already? Uh, one second, Commissioner. Seeing none, we're, we're going to go ahead and close the public input, and now we can open it up for questions. Commissioner Williams, you had. Well, and looking at the site plan that you have here, you've already utilized the, the uh, area you're asking for us to vacate anyway, aren't you? Do you not currently have cabins on that property? Yeah, since 1943, I think is the correct. You, did, you didn't build those no, without cabins. No, I wasn't here yet. It's a pre-existing condition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was passed down. Yeah. What do they call that? Prescriptive easement? No, no. Adverse possession. And, and Sam, just to uh, put it into the record, there was no uh, concern from any of the directors um, or the village, so the recommendation would be to approve, correct? No, there was not. Okay. Questions from the commission? Randolph Road will still be left open, though, right, to the to exit? Yes, it will not have an impact on Randall. I'd like to make a motion. Yes, sir. Based upon the foregoing finding of fact per 54-73 and 54-285 of the Village Code, I move to uh, recommend that the Village Council approve the request to vacate the unbuilt public right-of-way for case PVC 2023-230 with the conditions stated in the case report. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motions? You don't mean unbuilt, do you? You said unbuilt part of the right-of-way. Yes. That's what it is built. How <laughs> can you say the road unbuilt. is not built? It's an unbuilt. Is that what you're saying? The road's yeah. not built. Yeah. Okay. In that regard, it's unbuilt. Okay. That's what Sorry. it was. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go to roll call vote. Commissioner Baugh. Aye. Commissioner Byers. Aye. Commissioner McLena. Aye. Commissioner Richardson. Aye. Commissioner Rigsby. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Motion carries. Great. Thank you, Mr. Duke. We appreciate your time. Stephanie's got a couple of things for you to sign, but we appreciate it. Okay. Um, that thing goes to the council, though, right? I'll call you this afternoon to see when we can meet this week. I'm available anytime. Okay, thank you. 
And then that vacation of right away will go to Village Council. And it won't be the next? September the 12th. September the 12th. It will be the next one. Yeah, we're requesting as long as the public hearing is approved on the 8th, it'll be scheduled for the 12th. Cool. Thank you. Thank All you, right. sir. Thank you, everybody. We'll move to the next item, 6E, another vacation of the public domain, um, case 2023-232. Um, Sam, do you want to give us an overview on this one? Yes, thank you. Um, we have our applicant, uh, Mr. Shank, I guess. Yes. I'm sorry, what is your first name? Uh, Wes. Wes, that's right. Um, he is petitioning along with his wife to vacate a portion of public domain located at 134 Fern Trail, lot 10, block F of the Rudoso Springs subdivision. Um, this was originally platted for the river access, and as you know, the river channel has moved throughout the years. And um, the way that it's currently platted, as you all can see on page 83, it's um, directly through the north end of their home if you'd like to come up and explain or i so swear to tell the truth thank you sir so what do we got today um, yeah um basically um modern modern surveys show that um, the public right-of-way goes right through the middle of our home located on that uh, block F. Um, we'll be over tonight. Public <laughs> Correct. Um, so what we're proposing is that we vacate Pine Street uh, just like the homeowners to the west of us did, Mr. Skeen. Um, he had a, um, I forget what the term is called, where they assess what the entire neighborhood was supposed to look like, and their findings basically found that there's roughly 45 feet of the subdivision missing, which is basically that right-of-way. Um, so we're kind of just asking to do what's already been done and grant us that so we can clean up these issues for future use. Thank you, sir. Um, well, anything else, Dad? Not really. Okay. Um, unless you, you know, as questions. We'll have some questions, but we're going to open it up to public input, input first. And I don't think there's anybody here on Zoom, so I'll go ahead and close public input. And we will now open it up to the commissioners for questions. So, um, commissioners? And I, I just have a point of clarification. You said... Pine Street, but you applied for the vacation of Fern Street or Fern Trail. You want to vacate Fern Trail, correct? Not Fern Trail. No, Pine not Fern Street. Trail. Pine Street was never built. So. Correct. Pine, Pine Street, Street was never built on the south, but the application says Fern. Yeah. It's off of Fern Trail. The address is off of Fern Trail, but the I public see. domain doesn't have any kind of legal description to gotcha. it. Gotcha. Thank you for that clarification. Let's do it. Yeah. And Sam, there's no uh, concerns for the staff? No, we do not have any. Okay. I'll entertain a motion if there's no questions for the applicant. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Based upon the foregoing findings of fact 54-73 of the Village Code, I move to recommend to the, that the Village Council approve the request to vacate public domain affecting the property located at Lot 10, Block F of Rio Doso Springs Subdivision, also known as 134 Fern Trail, for case PBC 2023-232 with the conditions stating in the case report. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on the recommendation to Council? Hearing none, we'll go to a... Um, Roll call vote. Commissioner Bob. Aye. Commissioner Byers. Aye. Commissioner Rankalina. Aye. Commissioner Richardson. Aye. Commissioner Rigsby. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you so much for your time. This uh, 
solves a lot of issues for us. <laughs> so we won't be over tonight. Well, I guess, I guess well, not yet. We, sure. we still got a month. We can go <laughs> Do we still need right-of-way um, or easement clarification for the river path? Now that it's along the back side of the lot instead of the middle of? There's not enough room, really. It says on one of these evaluations that they already. wanted it. Yeah, that's a good question. Under numbers of... Um, Okay, I think, thank you, sir. I think that's the end of our quasi-judicial hearing. Um, Phyllis, Carlos, thanks for sticking in there with us. Uh, due to the interruption earlier, the board was discuss discussing about uh, potentially tabling these items that we have for the public input. Uh, so I do apologize for you all sitting through that, but... If... We will do, if the full commission's okay with it, to do chapter 22 to review that, which is what pages to what pages? It's going to be a ordinance amending the existing building code for chapter 22. And that's... And a resolution for amending the fees for um, building. What pages? Um, 132 is the resolution. And then... 127 on is... 127. 127 to the end? Yes. Please. But the fees and the ordinance are together for you all, so the motion will need to be for the ordinance and fees. So we're going to jump to... Um, Point B on our agenda, 7B, right? Yes. Because we want to have the council take action on this. Yes. The next meeting. Mm -hmm. So we, just a little history, we uh, did an audit for our um, building department and it was identified that our codes are not up to date and we needed to start enforcing the... Uh, versions of the code that the New Mexico, New Mexico CID is enforcing, and so we're just updating our codes to match that. Um, and so this is in line with uh, New Mexico CID as well. Um, as you can see, in the, we're jumping from um, 2015 to 2021 for most of them. Um, electrical, we're doing 2017 to 2020. And um, this is going to affect the fire code as well. They'll be um, updating to the 2021, and that's why we are having um, item C on here as well. So our short-term rental overlay um, permitting inspections are going to fall in line with the 2021 IFC. Okay. Thank you. Just a point of clarification. Do we need to vote to postpone A? Since we jump straight to B, uh, if y'all would like to, I believe that there's going. Oh, that's true. Yes, we can postpone it. Okay. Because um, we Continue. can do. Because you would like to try to do B and C today, if possible. Yes. Okay. 